Good morning, my friends, or whatever time of day you happen to be listening to this podcast. Appreciate you joining us for our study of the book of Romans. We're in Romans chapter number one, and we're kind of right in our theme section of the book of Romans. We've said that the book of Romans is all about the power of the gospel, the good news that Jesus died, that he was buried, that he rose again. The fact that because of the work of Christ, because of what he did on our behalf, the good news is that we can then be the recipients of, we can receive the gift righteousness of Jesus Christ. Because without righteousness, no man can see God. Without perfection, no man can enter into the presence of God. And it's impossible for you to be perfect enough. It's impossible for you to be righteous enough. That's why Jesus said to the uh, to the crowd of his day, he said, accept your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise enter into the kingdom. What did he mean by that? What he meant was, unless you can be more righteous than the more most righteous people you know, you'll never see God. Well, that sounds like an impossibility. Can, I, can you imagine me saying that to you? Unless you're more righteous than the most righteous person you know, you'll never see God. Well, that seems like an impossible standard. And it is. Because human righteousness is an impossible goal to achieve. Nobody will ever be righteous enough by his own works, by his own behavior to see God. Why? Because we're all sinners, as the book of Romans will clearly demonstrate. And what we need is we need a righteousness that does not belong to us, a righteousness that has been sufficiently earned. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus did earn the righteous favor of his father. Why? Because he fulfilled the law that you and I could not fulfill. He did the works that you and I could not do. He lived a life that you and I could not live. And then he died in my place. He, the, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. So the reason Jesus died was not for his own sins. He had none, but he died on my behalf. He died on your behalf so that the righteousness of Christ could be gifted to me. He who paid my penalty gave me his reward. That's what imputation is. God has imputed the righteous record of Jesus to my account. Why? Because Jesus took my unrighteous record to his account. God hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. Uh, That's the gospel story, and we're right in the middle of it because uh, last episode we talked about the fact that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So powerful is the gospel, it can save anybody, and Paul should know that, right? Paul said, I was the worst of anybody, and God saved me. Read all about his testimony there in 1 Timothy chapter 1 or Galatians chapter 1, where the apostle Paul said, I was the worst. I was the worst, and yet God saved me. Nobody is outside of the saving power of the gospel if they'll come to him by faith. And so it's the power of God unto salvation. To the Jew first, well, Paul's heart was to reach his own people, and everywhere he went, he presented the gospel to them first, but also to the Greek. So the gospel is for everybody. And then I think I mentioned last episode that we would jump into verse number 17, for therein— Verse 17, for therein, in the gospel, therein is the righteousness of God revealed. So the gospel, the word gospel literally means good news. So what does the gospel reveal? What does the gospel show us? Well, the Bible teaches that the good news of the gospel reveals the righteousness of God. So what do we need as lost sinners? We need righteousness, but we can't earn it. Uh, We've already... We've already uh, blown it in that sense, right? We're unrighteous. Our choices, our behaviors indicate that. Even our righteousnesses are tainted by wrong motives many times. That's why Isaiah said that even our righteousnesses are as filthy rags in the sight of God. And yet we need to be righteous. So the good news is that God offers us the very righteousness, the very righteousness of God. 
<laughs> Think about that. What a qualifier that I can be, I can have the righteousness of God. Now, I'll be honest with you. There's some people I really admire in this world. There's some people whose lives I really would love to emulate. People who have a great humility or or are great people of great prayer or people that that love so deeply. Boy, it just challenges my life to watch the testimony of others. And I'd love to be like that person. But the Bible doesn't say that the gospel is the revelation of someone else's righteousness because the best person who has ever lived still is tainted by unrighteousness. No, the Bible says the gospel is the good news that the righteousness of God can be revealed in my life and yours, that the very righteousness of Jesus Christ himself can be gifted to you and to me when we by faith believe the gospel, the fact that he died in my place. He was buried. He rose again in victory over sin and death in the grave. Oh, what a message. For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it's written, the just shall live by faith. And that's a quotation from the book of Habakkuk in chapter 2 and verse 4. So what's the point? The point is that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, not just for my justification, not, not just that time and place in my life when I trust Christ as my Savior, and now I'm, I'm freed from the penalty of sin. I'll never go to hell because I've trusted Christ. That's true. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, God declares you to be righteous. It's the declaration of God. It's the act of God to declare the sinner to be righteous in Jesus Christ, not because of his own goodness, but because of Jesus' goodness. That's wonderful. That's true. But the Bible says it's from faith to faith. In other words, from faith, from start to finish. Paul talked about this in Galatians chapter three. He said, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? It's a rhetorical question. Of course not. So you're saved by trusting Jesus Christ as your personal savior. You're not saved by works. You're saved by what he worked for you. You're not saved by your works, you're saved by his, right? So the Bible teaches that now that you are saved in the sense that you've been declared righteous, now you, you, you need to live your life the same way, trusting God every day by faith for him to form in you the very righteousness of Jesus Christ. We call that sanctification. It's not that I'm saved by faith, but now I've really got to work hard to keep my salvation. Oh, no, no. You walk in faith the same way you started in faith. That's why Paul said to the Galatians, having, uh, he said, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. And that, that, that's, a, that's a, a given. Since we live in the spirit, since we are saved, then walk in the spirit. And the point here is this, how were you saved? You were saved by realizing that you couldn't save yourself. You were saved by realizing that you had no power to save yourself. You were saved by admitting in humility that you needed him desperately and that you could only make it through his work and through his help. And then you reached out to him by faith, trusting him alone. That's how you were justified. Well, guess what, my friends? That's exactly how you live your Christian life. You live your Christian life the exact same way. You get up every day and say, I can't live this life. There's no way I can meet up to God's expectations. There's no way I can reflect Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. There's no way I can live by God's standards uh, outlined in the word of God. There's no way. And by the way, there is no way for you to do that in your flesh. And so you get up every day of your life and say, Lord, I can't. I can't. And Lord, I need you. And I need you desperately today. And I'm asking that you would live your life through me. I'm yielding to you, to your Holy Spirit. I pray that your word today would find fertile soil in my heart. Help me to obey what I am inclined not to obey. Help me to follow you. Help me to reflect Christ. And we live our Christian life in sanctification the same way that we began our Christian life by being justified. And that is we realize that we're sinners. 
We realize that Jesus Christ is our only hope. We humbly yield to him by faith. We allow him to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. It's a, it's a growth into dependency. See, as, as, as human beings, we grow into independency, right? As we get older, we become more and more independent of our parents and more and more uh, independent of uh, our, our need for those authorities in our life. But in a Christian life, we become more and more dependent. Boy, we realize I need thee every hour. I need thee. And sanctification is that process whereby the Spirit of God who lives inside of us, the very moment you trusted Christ as your Savior, he came to live inside of you. It's the process whereby the Spirit of God uses the Word of God to make me, the child of God, more like the Son of God. And the key is that I yield to Him every day, yield to Him. I reckon myself to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, I'm giving you a whole lot of information, and really what I've told you is going to be carefully explained now from this verse, chapter one, verse 17, all the way through uh, chapter eight, as we learn what the secret to victorious Christian living is in this sanctified life of the believer. Lot to say, but not a whole lot of time to say it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stop after just one verse. I know we didn't get far today, but Romans 1, 17 is one of the key verses of my life. Sometimes when I'm asked to write my name, sign my name down, which I don't really like to do, but uh, I always try to include a Bible verse because that is important. And when I include a Bible verse, when I sign my name, I, I almost always include Romans 1.17, the just shall live by faith. It's faith. Faith is what keeps us right with the Lord. Faith that I'm living in the presence of God. Faith that I'm a child of God. Faith that I'm in need of God. It's the life of faith that keeps us on that that road, that helps us to cooperate with the Holy Spirit of God who lives within us, not to grieve him, not to quench him, not to resist him, but to say, yes, Lord, yes, to his will and to his way, to say yes. I wonder today, are you saying yes to the Lord? I hope you said yes to him in justification. I believe I'm a sinner. I'm trusting Jesus Christ once for all for my eternal destiny. Uh, That's wonderful, but I hope you're trusting him every day. Lord, I can't do it today. Lord, I can't have victory over that sinful habit today. Lord, I'm not gonna be able to forgive that person today. Lord, I'm not gonna be able to live in victory today. But no, you're right, you can't. But he already has and he can. And through his spirit's power and help, You can live by faith today. It's God's way, and it's the way that we must all live. I hope that helps today. We're going to jump into verse number 18 next episode, and we're going to talk all about why we need the gospel. Because sometimes we think of ourselves a little bit more highly than we ought to think. And the Bible puts us right down on the bottom shelf where we belong and shows us that we have a great need for the gospel every single day. And it's good news. It's the powerful gospel that can change a life. It's changed mine, and I pray it's changed yours as well. God bless you, my friends. Thanks for taking time to watch. If you enjoy Everyday Truth, please like, subscribe, or share it with a friend. Until next time, God bless.